compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law. I wish to state that on January 30th, 2015, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I would ask all the rise for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Barbara, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr, Mr. Barr is absent. Mr. Coggins? Present. Mr. Pearson? Present. Mr. Young? Here. Mayor Columbo? Here. Uh, and uh, Mr. Barr is not feeling well this evening, so um, he's um, asked that, uh, you know, take the evening off because of an illness. All right. Um, would someone like to make an approval of the minutes from January 5th, uh, the reorganization minutes, January 12th, the regular meeting, and closed session meetings? So moved. Second. Is there any corrections, omissions, deletions that anyone's aware of? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. All right. Uh, Barbara, do you have any for us this evening? I just have one item this evening. And this is uh, something actually that we talked about in closed session at the last meeting. Uh, the renewal of the, uh, of the shared service agreement with the county OEM uh, for the medical ATV. Uh, a letter um, is required to renew that agreement, and I'd like to have a formal uh, authority uh, to send the letter. Just a motion and a second and a vote. Okay. Does someone like to make a motion to that effect? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Let's call the roll, please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumber? Yes. Motion is carried. That's all I have to see me. Thank you. Okay, Daniel. Um, we have uh, two closed session negotiation items. Uh, we also have safety and security and personnel items. Okay, Paul. Uh, thank you. I do have several items here this evening. Uh, first, I just wanted to—I uh, don't know, Mayor, if you were going to bring it up but regarding the, our meeting we had with the Army Corps of Engineers for the pre-construction meeting for the uh, Beachville. That's fine. That's one of the things I was going to bring up. So let's—we can you can summarize that. Yeah, we did meet with the, them on their pre-construction meeting. They did make the official notice that, uh, you know, they were going to lift the restriction for the uh, bird nesting restriction on the north end so that they were going to be able to start the north end during the first part of the project. Uh, they are anticipating starting Strathmere uh, sometime in April. They will most likely land uh, the pipe and landing at Hawthorne Avenue which is kind of at the south end of Strathmere, the beginning of Whale Beach, pump north to finish the uh, north end, then turn around and pump uh, Whale Beach. I think that's probably the most advantageous schedule uh, for us. Um, overall, you know, you know, we'll probably have most of the summer season uh, with uh, the pipes south of Whale Beach, so we'll be in uh, good shape for the summertime to have uh, a nice full beach for uh, the public and. Uh, Hopefully, have some of those areas cleaned up. And and didn't they say that they were just um, closing up a thousand feet of beach at a time? Correct. So, if in fact it runs into Memorial Day or something like that, where we get closer to the to the end, of, you know, beginning of the season, um, you know, we'll probably have to make some sort of arrangements for that, um, and you know, probably put up some kind of you know temporary barrier so that you know the beach can't be accessed from those particular streets, but. Uh, as Paul said, it, it sounded, um, you know, very, very <coughs> optimistic for us in that if they do somehow get started by April 1st, um, they anticipate probably being, you know, on their way down Whale Beach by the time they even get, I guess, to Memorial Day or just after that, so. Correct. Um, so that, that's a good thing. 
So obviously we'll keep the committee uh, up to date. I also will be touching base with you. Uh, I think most of you haven't, you know, weren't present for our prior beach fills and that they do offer, you know, if the committee wants to take a little tour of the dredging operations and get a foot right out to the dredge and seed operation, um, they will schedule that kind of opportunity for township committee. Yeah, and the other thing that they um, were very adamant about, they, you know, they don't want people walking up and talking to them at the construction zone. Um, they, they want people to be cognizant of the fact that there's, they have a lot of OSHA requirements. So even if, you know, as we as committeemen want to go up to see, you know, what's happening, um, they expect us to be wearing the right um, equipment, you know, hard hat, some sort of vest or something, um, and still stay clear of the actual operation area, but uh, they'll work with us. But they, um, they said that in the past, some of the beach replenishments that, not, not just in Strathmore, but really basically everywhere, you know, there's a lot of um, folks who want to ask questions, how's things going, you know, and um, and their biggest problem is, is it's not that they don't want to make themselves available to answer questions, it's more that they're very concerned about safety um, opportunities. So, um, you know, basically we were told that, you know, if they get complaints that, you know, people are saying, you know, yelling at them to get off the area, it's more that they're concerned about safety areas, not necessarily trying to be antagonistic to the folks that are there. So, And they will have at either end of the work zone, you know, a safety officer, a security officer to, you know, to make sure people are, uh, you know, staying clear of the hazard areas uh, for those safety work zones. Now, the one thing they did say, they were they were going to have uh, a schedule a meeting just prior to starting the beach replenishment, right? And we said that we would have it here. We're going to look to have a public um, information Because we yes. thought that for two things. One, if we had it here, we could videotape it. It could be available to residents, say in Strathmore, or whoever wasn't able to make the meeting. It'll be um, put on a link and will be available for, for, for folks to see. So um, even though the last meeting was at Strathmere Fire Hall, um, for our pre our actual construction, or right before it starts, they're willing to come here and do a public meeting here um, and explain everything that's going on. So. And then the one thing they did, did ask for Township Committee is if we could, uh, Adopt a resolution uh, just acknowledging and, and discussing that there that it is a 24 hour uh, work operation on the beach and supporting the project. So they, they and did that's so, that you know, obviously, there's some noise uh, problems when they back up you, the safety beeps and stuff. But um, in order to get this project off and running and, and keep it going, they need to have that opportunity to go 24 hours. So we, that's put that, we have a formal resolution for we, that. We've done right? that the last two yes. beach fills. So I put that on the next. Meeting's agenda. Yes. Is it too late to put it on Monday? Or? We have we're, time. If it can't make it for Monday, you know, we right. have we'll sufficient put on time. meeting in February then. You want to talk now about the Route 50 bridge meeting that we had? I'll let you discuss that if you. Um, Paul and I met with the construction folks for the Route 50 bridge um, going over Tuckahoe River. Um, they've looked at a lot of different options. Um, it, mainly, the original idea was to put a temporary bridge up um, for, for a number of factors. That doesn't look like that's going to work in this particular construction situation. Um, they then attempted to see if it was feasible to cut the bridge in half and keep one lane open uh, for access across uh, the Tuckahoe River while they started doing construction on the new bridge. Um, the bridge itself is structurally so unsound that they didn't feel that that was a practical solution either. So, the issue is um, that what they're looking to do is close the entire area down from a, approximately a nine month period starting in September or approximately September and running through May of, of this coming year. And, and they said that they would be able to construct a bridge uh, and that time period if everything was closed. Now, I, into, I, I told them that we're responsible for um, fire and rescue, um, and that also that the children go to school um, in Upper Township. Um, and, and one of the solutions is, and, and, and I got Mr. Pearson involved with this a little bit as well, one of the solutions is, is that he had suggested that they could put a temporary walk uh, bridge that would also accommodate uh, a couple ATVs and part of the 
the budgeting process to, to close and build this bridge, um, they would be at least, or at least a suggestion was that they'd be willing to supply fire and rescue with two of these vehicles and then also keep a, uh, whether lease or buy uh, a new ambulance or fire and fire truck to keep on the other side to, to make an immediate response if it's needed, um, knowing full well that it's an eight mile round going ahead of the river to get into that area. Um, Here's the issue. The issue is that the bridge is really becoming stru structurally a problem. And to change the whole process now could potentially delay it for another three years. And the problem with that is, is ultimately the bridge could be closed anyway because it's not going to be structurally sound. So really, we're, our, I wouldn't say our hands are tied. Uh, they're willing to come up with any solution and they're willing to meet with fire and rescue. Um, to, uh, to try and come up with some feasible solutions to this issue. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to address the children. It sounds like it's going to have to be the, the, the eight mile run around uh, through um, head of the river. Um, but based on the conversation, it seemed to me that he was pretty confident that if we didn't go through this process, we might well find the bridge closed ultimately anyway and, and have it delayed for a substantial amount of time. He felt that the, the money and everything is in place to start this project in September, and correct me if I'm wrong, yes. um, if this plan were to be approved by the community. Uh, we said that we would like to structure, like have a, a meeting here, um, obviously to ask not only our own residents in Tuckahoe, but also the residents of Corbin City that will be affected from a public safety standpoint and then also, like I said, the children come here to school. Um, but it sounded like that was unfortunately the best option that we have at this point. He also intimated that starting in, in the spring that the um, improvements that were put in the plan for Tuckahoe itself, the, the village of Tuckahoe, meaning lighting and sidewalks and those kind of things would start, um, what do you say, April or May of Probably this year. Yep. They, they, they plan to start that project, get that work and get that work done before they work on the bridge. So um, that's something that we all gonna have to work together uh, to come up with a solution. We certainly don't wanna put anybody's lives at risk. Um, we've taken all the responsibility for, for we're doing fire and rescue in, in Corbin City. So um, we're gonna have to have some future meetings on that. but. That's where we stand on that. you have anything to add to that? No, I think that you summarize it. Okay. How does that tie into the schedule with the Parkway Bridge? Um, I don't know that it really has any, any tie-in at all with it. There's separate funding and it's a separate um, uh, approved budgeted project and, and, you know, ironically, they'll probably simultaneously almost get done around the same time just based on, on you know, what, what he was uh, saying to us. I mean, it, it, like I said, it, the, the plan is, is to really try and do it at the least amount of traffic possible, meaning mid-September to mid-May, trying to t take into effect Labor Day and some, you know, uh, like post-season traffic that happens on weekends, and then get it done in time so that they can get through the traffic in Memorial Day. Because, uh, I mean, there's no question that they're already aware of the fact that there's traffic jams every weekend, you know, 49 and 50. I mean, that light is a disaster. So they're hoping that as they do some of these improvements and get this bridge in place that, you know, even though there'll be inconvenience, it, it will be at least somewhat less than what it could be, potentially be. So do you, do you, and then we also met with South Jersey Gas, you know, just preliminary meeting as to what's going on that progress, I, you know. I know that there's not too many things that, you know, are, are in place, but um, South Jersey is um, still looking to try and make sure that there is uh, an opportunity for reliability. Um, there is no secondary access to the pipeline uh, that exists in Cape May County at this time. Um, and so uh, there is no redundancy. <laughs> And that's part of the, the overall plan, you know, for South Jersey to move this project on. Potentially, you know, what, what has been perceived. I mean, there's there's a lot of different um, sides on, on that, but um, the project we, we Paul and I did have a chance to meet with them, and 
you know, more of a catch up as to where we are with that project. So. Uh, the next time I had was uh, we received a, a request from Kimby County Farmland Preservation. They're looking to uh, uh, purchase uh, the Bauer Farm in, in Seaville, uh, right off of uh, Route 9, just north of uh, Route 50. And uh, they're looking for a resolution of support from the Township Committee uh, regarding that purchase. Does that include the pond and everything for? Yes. Yes. To all the farmland and Correct. Correct. So, do we need a motion for us to move uh, forward? They that? want a written resolution. They want a written resolution. Yes, yeah, so it would be put on an agenda if you're inclined. Uh, we haven't, uh, for the newer township committee folks, um, this is something that comes up occasionally. Uh, it's essentially a deed restriction that, that um, says that it'll be a farm in perpetuity. Uh, and because that takes away value and developability of the land, uh, uh, they get paid for that. The, the, there's a program, it's a state funded through a, a bonding program with the state, Green Acres. Um, uh, the township has in the past uh, agreed to do that because uh, it's good to preserve land. Um, for your purposes, I guess you would look at it to make sure that it's not a center where you would want gradables or some other use and, and the fact of preserving it as a farm is good for the township. So that's, that's the question you would have. And if you're in favor of it, we put it on the agenda for a resolution. Most of the time, we have been in favor of preserving our farms. Makes a lot of sense. To win win. So, you'll put that on if that future committee feels that they're inclined to go forward. That's what do you want do. us to do a, a motion now for you to go ahead and I draft need the that? direction of the committee to put it okay. on. So, would someone like to make a motion to move forward with that? I'll so make that motion. Okay. So, John first. No, second. Mr. Young, second. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Poggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, next time I had, uh, last August, uh, we had our uh, routine inspection from the DEP for our stormwater management program. And they inspect uh, all of our drainage facilities and a uh, public works yard and, and various areas to make sure we're in compliance with the various rules and regulations. And, and as we were going over things, uh, the inspector, you know, kind of put us in, you know, for, you know, kind of a, an award. So we, we recently received a certificate of environmental stewardship uh, from the DEP, and which it kind of acknowledges, uh, you know, that we go well beyond sometimes in our efforts, both at, in the housekeeping at Public Works Yard and, and how we maintain our uh, <coughs> stormwater infrastructure and everything like that. So it's kind of just a, you know, a thank you and a kudos from the DEP saying that we're doing a good job in uh, keeping a, you know, good stewardship of our uh, land in Upper Township. So we received that. Uh, the next item I had, you know, we had two uh, projects, construction projects that had pre-construction meetings over the last two weeks. One is our project, Bayview Drive in Strathmere. Uh, the contractor's looking to get started possibly next week uh, on that road, so there will be some road closures uh, where you know, during the day you know, there won't be through traffic on Bayview Drive or some of the side streets coming up to Bayview Drive as the contractor puts new drainage improvements and we're looking to raise that roadway uh, to help prevent flooding. Uh, that is a project that's fully funded by grants over $380,000 uh, from the uh, Department of Transportation Trust Fund. Uh, the next project is a county project. Hook Course and Road is looking to start possibly at the end of February, beginning of March. Uh, it's been a long-awaited uh, project here by uh, the township, uh, and they're going to reconstruct from Route 9 to Stagecoach Road uh, for Hook Course and Road. Uh, there again, that will be a, because of the extensive nature of reconstructing that road, that road will have a detour set up when they start construction. It will be open for you know, residents that live on that road the road will be remain open, but there won't be any through traffic allowed down the road. And, and the second part of that project is stagecoach to 50, and that's delayed because the permits haven't gone through. Is that correct? Uh, as you're all, you know, besides the condition of the road, you know, we're all well aware of the different flooding, especially that happens uh, towards uh, Route 50 on Hook Corson Road. The amount of flooding that we get, especially on the very large storms, uh, they're actually. Uh, applying because of the length of pipe that's required to go from uh, Hope Corson and Stagecoach Road down to uh, the, 
the township's basin on Island View Terrace, they're going to tie it in there so it has a more positive outflow uh, and can drain there. Uh, it's taking a long time for the DEP to re review that part of the permit. Uh, but they hopefully will have that permit sometime this year. Well, doesn't Advantage have a big drainage wheel behind them too? Yes. Has it been looked into for them? They did look into that, hill. but it was, it was more difficult actually to get to that location. And they still would have needed permit mm -hmm. to actually get the crossing across Route 50 and back up towards Advantage Drive. Uh, not to mention the, uh, the basin on Island View Terrace actually has better drainage characteristics than the pond out at the end of Advantage Drive. So they'll have to pump it then? No, it won't be pumped. It, it can, it'll flow by gravity. It, you wouldn't think it, but when you, you do the survey... If you look at the elevation, you think it's probably about a 10 or 12 foot difference? No, you have, it has, it, they're going to intership the drainage at Stagecoach and Hope Corson. So they won't take it from the bottom at Route 50 and Hope Corson, but they'll take all the drainage that's coming down from Route 9 and Hope Corson right, and so then take that The time. second phase will be dealt with on Route, on route 50 at that time then? Yes. So, so both of those projects will be beginning here in the next week or two. Uh, the next item we had to do, uh, the Amanda's Field, the grant we got from the county on Amanda's Field, uh, we had to send the county uh, a request to extend that time frame. Uh, the grant time that they wanted us to spend the money was expiring, so we sent the county a request to extend it for another 12 months so that we could get the construction improvements for the restroom facilities, uh, second coat of paving and some other improvements at a main field that we received the grant for. Did we receive a positive back on that or? I, I sent a letter. Uh, well, when we, it was pursuant to the contract. The contract right. actually had a procedure that if you think you're not going to get this done by this date, uh, put a written request and then in 30 days we'll get back to you and let you know. I think Paul has informally talked to them. He doesn't expect a problem. Okay. Well, but the letter was sent in, in, in plenty of time prior right. to the, the letter had to go out uh, right. uh, by Friday. That's yeah. why it went out. Um, and then the last thing I had was I'd like to request um, a budget request from the bond uh, for four thousand dollars for the for the presentation displays, uh, electronic presentation displays in the in the foyer, and for the display here in Township Committee uh, that we've been discussing. We finalized some of our quotes and everything, and we're looking forward to move the, that project forward, but we need a resolution to authorize the money from the bond that's, that was appropriated uh, for that purpose. Need a motion on that? Yeah. Motion to approve that request. Second. Any discussion? The electronic displays, Paul, what is exactly are we? If in the foyer, um, th there's the two static uh, boards. One, you know, kind of has the meeting dates. The other one that has like the listing of the various you know, attention committee and, and who the different department heads are, you know, they would be replaced with electronic displays where we can, you know, present more information. Also, to, you know, we're, there's a thought to provide, you know, UTTV2, I mean, 97 scrolling there. So, you know, and also we provide different PSAs and just to provide more information than what those two static displays can provide. So we're talking about like television monitors? Television monitors that will have a, you know, computer program that we'll be able to program and present the information up there. Okay. Let's call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. That's all I had. You had quite a bit. <laughs> Barbara? I just have one item this evening. Um, had a um, survey from, received a, a survey from the Atlantic County GIF, which were members of, um, asking if we would like to participate in their optional safety budget. It's $1,500 that they provide to the township um, for safety related items. Um, we did not participate last year. Um, what happens is if you participate, your assessment towards the GIF goes up by $1,500. Um, our budget typically can, can um, purchase our safety items that we need, our gloves, our vests, things of that nature, um, that we don't need the $1,500 from the GIF. So um, it's a recommendation that we not accept the safety budget. And I'll just turn to you, uh, Mr. Pearson. You, you served on the safety committee in the past. Uh, 
you see any need to do anything like that? Uh, <laughs> since I haven't attended a meeting in about two years, I'd have to, I'd have to yield to Terry, and she's she's left. I don't believe. Actually, All right, Mr. Potter, Potter, we're putting Let's you check. on the spot then. Yeah, I, I think we're fine. I think the individual departments maintain their own safety, whereas it would just go for safety vests, safety gloves. Yeah, which we already got in. Yeah. You know, we have an SOEM or OEM, so it is all for us. And that has no ill effect on our overall um, status yeah. with the GIF? No. Not or, any, or any not awards and that we get. Yeah. Okay. Not at all. No. Not at all. Think about it. Charging you on one side, you yeah. Right. You just make a commitment really to spend fifteen hundred dollars right. on safety yeah. gear. Well, they probably have a co-op together to, to purchase the stuff. Is probably what they're looking to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No, they usually just give the money back to us. They and give we buy you, it. Yeah, they give you the money. Uh, all right. Well, we'll we'll forego that one. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Coggins. I'd like to thank all the department heads who uh, showed up tonight for the uh, for the budget meeting, and I appreciate your continued cooperation. That's okay, all. Mr. Young. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the rescue squad uh, for inviting all of us to your 50th anniversary and installation dinner over the weekend. It was a beautiful affair, and you know we can't say enough or praise your organization, Jay, enough for everything they've done for this township over the past years. So thank you so much. Um, we were approached by Beacon Rescue, the animal rescue. They're having problems with their septic system. Uh, it seems that there's some sand infiltration and they're gonna need it pumped out and vacuumed. Um, it's gonna be between a $750 to a $1,000 item at this time until we figure out what's going on. They are asking for some help on that from the township. We have a, a lease with them right. uh, where it's for nominal consideration. It is part of their responsibility to maintain that. So that would actually be a, a lease item that the, you would have to forego your rights under that lease and go above and beyond what was agreed to with the uh, uh, association. You can do that. I'm just letting you know the lease is it's their responsibility. Back. So they have the obligation to correct it. Uh, if the system is failing, that's still their obligation to rebuild the whole system? Yes because there was significant questions as to um, the integrity of the systems at the, at the animal shelter that was part of the agreement. All right, so but that would go to anything structural as well, Dan, if the roof, if the roof I, is I collapsed? Check it I mean, I'm looking at a major versus a minor uh, I'll issue. check it, but I'm almost entirely positive. You know, I'm 90% sure that they are responsible for everything. Okay. Well, personally, I'd like to see us consider this anyway. I mean, the reality is, is they're, they're really fulfilling a real positive impact mm -hmm. to the township. I mean, um, we have not had anywhere near some of the issues we had five, six, seven years ago. And the overall maintenance of that building was substantial to this township in the past. And, you know, because it is a septic system and because they are a volunteer organization, I, I'd like to see us consider helping out whenever way we can for this particular yeah. situation. I'm just going to make a suggestion. And, that and we frankly, just so you know, that, that, that lease has worked very well. Mm -hmm. We have had other nonprofits that have had troubles with county facilities. Yeah. We've never had trouble with that lease. Right. I, I was going to suggest it's, it's, a, it's a major issue that we would uh, dedicate 500 hours towards that uh, and not in excess of 500 unless the system has to be totally redone to offset at least half the cost on so it's Is to the board's motion? discretion. I'll I'd make that motion. I'll would second. We, would, be, would we be able to do this in such a way, Dan, that we're not setting a precedent on the lease? That You'd would have to make it clear to them that it's not a change in lease terms. This is a one-time only donation, if you will, to help them to gift. assist them. Um, we've done similar things, uh, not maybe to this scale, but similar things with the, uh, the historical society nonprofit leases of some of the other township properties. Um, generally what happens is you allow them to take over a property that's not being used, there needs to be care taken, and, and they assume the responsibility, but sometimes they, their budgets run short and they ask for help. I think it's a worthy cause. I do too. Yeah. I already seconded it. Jeff seconded it, so call the roll. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. Um, 
With the lights for Amanda's Field, they're scheduled for delivery February 23rd, correct? Um, Paul's diligent on this and has went way beyond uh, making phone calls and asking for volunteers or people to donate their time and their equipment. And it looks like we are in pretty good shape with a company that's local that has volunteered their manpower as well as all their equipment to install the lights. Uh, the only issue we do have with it, this takes a three foot auger. The holes for the supports are three foot wide, 15 foot deep. And this company doesn't, uh, they don't have a, a three foot auger available to them. So uh, talking to Paul, he's gonna look to see if maybe there's some other companies that have one locally, or if we could rent one that would attach to their um, reach and, uh, and be able to use it. So uh, once this happens, if we do get it up, then what I'm gonna recommend is that we do a really nice sign. This is a major, major donation to this township and to the recreation program, a sign that would be put up right at the entrance to the baseball project saying, sponsored by and, and, and the work was done by such and such a company. And I really don't want to come out with who the company is at this point. Do you think, Paul? It's up to you. I think oh, well, we can. It's uh, South State uh, Excavating and, and Construction Company. They do bridges. They're local. Um, Tim Morrison, correct? Yes. Um, Steve Myers, who went through all of our recreation programs here. They've uh, graciously donated their time and their service to put this up. So that's going to help us by about, probably about $15,000 expenditure, right? in uh, manpower and rental fees. So substantial savings, so um, definitely heading in the right way. Uh, it kind of, when I hear about the grant possibly could have been terminated, you know, done away with for not being done in a timely manner, I think that just proves what's been going the last year or two with getting to this point almost cost us $220,000 in grant money. And uh, it's time to move forward on this and get it done. Um, we're going to have a meeting come up for a special events committee. Barb, I'd like to do it next Wednesday night here. Is that possible, 7.30? I have to check the... All right, well, tentatively, we'll set it for 7.30, um, February 14th at the Township Hall. It'll be a special event, uh, subcommittee basically for the Township uh, for 4th of July, Memorial Day, any of the functions we do at Amanda's Field. So anybody that's interested in, in being part of this, uh, is welcome to attend and we'll see how many people we have where it goes and hopefully it'll make everything run a lot smoother this year and have a lot more ideas involved with it that was 7 p.m uh 7 30. 7 30 p.m yeah 2 14. okay um i will be contacting mike bring your sweetie to the special events meeting that's it <laughs> oh <laughs> it is well you know what then, then we'll do it the 13th We'll do it the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, John. There's sure an awful lot of... Discussion. We'll do it tentatively. If you guys are covering it, it'll be on the 13th. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Sony. In the near couple of weeks, I'll be contacting oh, Mike. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, to do a building by building walkthrough, Mike, so we can get a master list up on anything that needs to be done and get a master plan for maintenance and repairs on all the buildings. And I want to cover everything, including uh, historical buildings, right on down to township garages, the rescue squad building, everything that's uh, under our guidance. So we can find out where we are in the next three to five years with projections of what we're going to have to do that's going to be major. This roof is one of them, and that's one of my issues. Um, one thing that I really wanted to bring up tonight, I had a, a phone call from the wrestling program, and I'm asking to have a resolution done for this person. Uh, we had a young lady, Jade Phelps. Her dad is Scott Lee, uh, one of her wrestling coaches. She's 13 years old, and she won the state title in the, NU, uh, the New Jersey Wrestling USA 103-pound class. To my understanding, it's the only girl who ever won that title in the South Jersey area. So we're going to ask for a resolution to be done for her. And also, uh, for any coverage we can get, she now qualifies for the National Wrestling Tournament in Oklahoma. So they are going to be doing fundraisers and asking for donations to help her get to Oklahoma and represent us. But quite an extraordinary feat. And uh, she also plays on the varsity football team, so she's pretty tough. And uh, that's about all I had for right now. Okay. 
Mr. Pearson. Uh, just a few items. I have a couple items for a closed session, as previously mentioned by Dan. Uh, I, also, I attended the uh, Upper Township Chiefs Association last Wednesday night. It was a good meeting, and we, uh, uh, I focused some of the discussion on uh, improvements to the website by the fire commissioners. I uh, gave them some samples and items and talked about what, what they should be putting up there, et cetera, and I, and I think it's, uh, I think they're going to work well. Uh, to get that done. Uh, I want to follow up on the shutdown for uh, the road for the, yeah. 50 bridge. No, not the 50 the, bridge. The uh, Harbor, Harbor, Harbor Road. Yeah. Did they start that as, as predicted today? I guess it was no. supposed to start? Okay. No, I was down there today and okay. uh, they had no closures. For okay. So just to let everybody know, it was put out, it was going to be closed the 2nd through the 7th. I believe off and on. I think weather is it's good. weather condition and materiel, cranes, etc. People, but anybody going out or trying to get out to Arbor Road, it may be difficulty during the day daytime. Anywhere from eight o'clock until four o'clock in the afternoon, I believe was the time set. But it's not closed. supposed to be continuous, right? They're supposed Correct. to allow intermittent some intermittent. sort of access for the yeah. certainly for the residents, so they're not yeah. stranded. Yeah, they didn't but, put that in the ad, but you're right. But there could be extensive. There could be like a period of a half an hour to 45 minutes yeah. where there's no, no access available, um, where they have to use all, an alternative route to get in and out. Um, just, just so everyone's aware, we did ask, I had Barbara and I, we worked together to see if we could potentially utilize the road out to the parkway. Yeah. Can't and they wouldn't allow it, so. No, the uh, state won't allow anybody to put that in there because it's a, an access road to a major, major lane highway and it doesn't have proper speed get-ups, et cetera, to get into there, so. Uh, I visited the uh, division of EMS and had an excellent uh, briefing with uh, Chief Potter. Uh, it was very informative. We went over the budget process, and I appreciate his uh, uh, being frank with me and uh, open discussion. It was very good. Uh, I'm proposing, and we, you had discussed this before I became a member of the Township Committee, that you wanted to see or start having the fire commissioners starting with Seville to come to the table and to a meeting and discuss what transpired in the past and how they're going to move forward. Could I propose that for March the 30th, our meeting in March the 30th? That's fine. I mean, I because I'd like I to just we, get a focus and get them going. Right. I mean, I, I mean, obviously there may be some sensitive. I think we'll have to rely on Dan's judgment as, mm -hmm. as to what can be asked. Well, certain here. things, obviously, if they're under investigation, right. would not be able to be discussed. Correct. Um, they wouldn't be able to share it with us. Mm -hmm. But, uh, frankly, other more public issues, they, it's not only appropriate, it's, I think it's a proper role for the Township Committee. It's right. one of our best practices to look at the exactly. fire districts. Have you had any dialogue with anyone from Seville about that proposal? For uh, other than at the Chiefs meeting, I discussed it and propose that that be in their mind that they start focusing for that and that the commissioners and the Seville Fire Company come before us and discuss openly okay. as much as they can. Because I asked uh, for something yeah. very similar to that recently from their attorney okay. and uh, in fact last week I spoke to him and he said he's working on it. So. Okay, good, good. And then I, then I would suggest follow up with the other fire company shortly thereafter. Uh, uh, let's see, I guess the last thing I have is a uh, resolution that this was Ed's resolution for, uh, that he was supposed to discuss falls under his bailiwick. But it's regarding uh, Route 9 and the Seaside, Sea Sound Avenue area where we were asked to, to have the state come in and take a look at that and put in double lines there, etc. Well, they did the evaluation of it and uh, legally, uh, what they say is these updates must be legally established as no passing zones requiring a traffic regulation order. Now, to start that process, this township committee has to uh, do a resolution so that they'll move forward on this process. So they've given us a sample resolution here, and I would recommend or move that we uh, go forward with this resolution. Well, just, just so you know, typically, and, and that's fine, we'll use that as a template. Yeah. We usually have Dan um, 
The uh, clerk's office can take that if as long as the committee uh, uh, feels appropriate. We'll put that on a future agenda for yep. action. All right. So you've made a motion to, to put it have future. Dan create a resolution to that effect to make a new passes on that. I'll effect. second that. Correct. Would you call the roll, please? <laughs> Mr. Bogan? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. And that's all I have, sir. Okay. Um, we covered a lot of things. I only have one other thing um, to add. Um, I did have uh, the privilege uh, and an opportunity to talk uh, last week with the Upper Township Business Association. Um, they are really, um, I think, very, very energetic and enthusiastic association. They're trying to come up with some great ideas to um, sell the township, sell their businesses. Um, and um, one of the suggestions that I think hopefully will get off the ground is, is uh, a, a farmer's market that they're suggesting to have um, at Amanda's Field um, in, on a Friday uh, because apparently there's other days, Ocean City does a day and CL does a day. Um, but I, I think it's a great idea. Um, I have um, frequent in farmers markets myself. I mean, it's a great opportunity to get a lot of fresh produce and a lot of other things too, some crafts and those kind of things. So um, just to give everybody a heads up and, and I had suggested that the township committee would certainly work and help to support this and get it off the ground, you know, whenever way we can help, to f help them facilitate it. So anyway, um, when we hear more for them, and maybe you've heard more already, Hobie, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I was invited to their meeting and unfortunately I couldn't make it last week. Um, they have another meeting coming up. I know the turnout was really large uh, and a lot of support for it. Now it's just getting the particulars down, but uh, it looks like it's heading in the right direction. So, Mayor, that, that's a, that's actually being spearheaded also formally through by the, the green, through the green, through the green team, team. The green yeah. team, and I actually have a meeting with them uh, later this week to go over some of the specifics. Um, you know, location being one of those. You know, we're still, you know, I think they have some some ideas. Uh, so once they have some formal ideas, if there's anything that we need township action on. We'll bring that back to the committee, you know, as far as rules and regulations and different things. It was going to impact one of our properties, like Manusville. Oh, how would that work? I mean, would, would these the people who are vendors would they need to pay a fee to participate in that? That's typically um, they've looked. You know, they've gotten. You know, they're not reinventing the wheel. You know, so they've gone. You know, Brigantine Team has had a pretty successful one for several years now. So they've gotten like the rules and, and how they do it. But yeah, they, most of the vendors would sign up either. Most of them, they try to get like a, a seasonal pass, and then you know th that that fee kind of helps cover some of their operating expenses as far as tables and different expenses and advertising and stuff like that. Uh, well, who runs it? The township or the business organization? Well, that's that's one of the things that that we're looking at now is you know whether or not they're going to create their own little farm market association to kind of run it. You know, independently, and then um, we just do a nonprofit use of facilities. Correct, as as part of like a sponsoring. You know, since it's part of the green team, would you know be part of you know same same way the recreation programs use our facilities and, and do it. That's what if we did it, we would have to go through the rules and regulations and it's a different type situation. It's more like we do the Fourth of July, so that's our project. Mm -hmm. If it's right. an outside organization, okay. they just would follow the use of facilities. If, if the green team is spearheading this, which they are. And they do other things in the township, or you know, does that cover them under the township? Well, I, I don't. I don't want to take it away from what they wanted to do, but maybe they just wanted to get an outside organization involved in it and have them take over. That's yeah. that's some of the things that they discussed at that meeting, okay. and, and we're going to discuss some of the more fine, or, you know, some more fine points. Um, but we're hope. I think they're hoping to have some more finalized plans here within the next month, so that they can kind of have approval of it, so they can start advertising to get vendors and. And people were ready for the season because it's. So we also, have we gotten any feedback from some of the small mom and pop uh, roadside markets? My understanding is there were several from Upper Township that were there. I, I know, you know, so I, I have talked to like Tony's Produce uh, okay. around the corner from here, and you know, he's kind of he has mixed feelings about it because that, he has he's, I mean, he's participated <laughs> in some of them, but you know, sometimes you'll have a a farmer from you know, outside the area that does more bulk farming and comes in and, and kind of sells at a, a discounted wholesale price that he can't compete with. Um, but there's some avenues of thought that, you know, you know, he can still come there and advertise and people see 
his face and his name, and then he, you know, it's much of an advertising saying things. Yeah, maybe I can't say that quart of tomatoes today because I'm not the cheapest, but you know what? The rest of the week, I'm right here around the corner, and you can come get produce other times. So, those are some of the things we're looking at. Um, also, whether or not the, you know, you know, because it's not the township, you know, it's a private thing. You know, they may try to give priority to township vendors first, kind of thing. So, that, those are some of the things that they're they're looking at as far as how they develop the rules and regulations and, and where We only had maybe three to four roadside markets in the township anyway. It's not where it's a large amount anymore. Correct. Most of them closed down. No, they, they have. That's the thing. So, There's a few of them hanging on. Do this, we, this do we want to drag them down? No, I, I don't, do we want to myself, I don't see them dragging them down. As Paul said, if they set up here on Friday, they're open six more days a week. They hand out their business card or their flyers, what they have, their network. And I think it's a great idea. So it's, it's part of that balance well, I, that, that I mean, we have to look you'd at. You'd be surprised how many local residents don't even know where some of these small stands are. Mm -hmm. And and I think by having a generalized area to be, make people more familiar with it, it could actually help them in the long run. Right. I think and, that and that's also why the Green Team is partnering, you know, in being in conjunction with the Business Association, because the Business Association is really trying to, it has kicked off a, you know, buy local campaign, you know, to put out postcards and different things to the campgrounds and different places, you know, to talk about, hey, what, what's available here in the township so that you don't have to go outside the township to buy it there? And, you know, the farm markets, I think, is an integral part to that. So, yeah, I think it would be a great gesture on the part of the green team if we got the buy-in of the, of the small local mom-and-pop markets here in the township. I mean, that, that's why when I heard about it, I went and visited with a yeah. couple just to get their feel and understanding also. I agree. So we'll also have to start moving forward with our fee, with the fees on vendors and the facilities, right, Barb? Well, it depends, on how we, it depends on how it's set up. If it's an outside, you know, that's some of the, the some of how we have to figure out how that group wants to set it up and how much involvement they want the township with, or is it going to be a that when, not for when, profit? When do you yeah. plan on having that meeting? Uh, only because honestly, it's January. It seems like we have plenty of time. But we don't. Well, we no, don't I have. Mean, I, I, I mean, I've been trying to push them all of the fall to say I, I was hoping that they were going to have their. I'll say. Their format, in, you know, in January, so that you know, if it needed township committee, well, actually, it's February. I, so that's we're already in a different month. They're behind the schedule. Mm -hmm. right. I'm meeting with them Thursday, I believe, uh, to kind of see where they're at and see how we keep moving them forward. Okay. Well, let's let's keep that somewhat pendant and give us updates um, every meeting, if you could. I will. Right, so that's all I have. Um, I did want to make an announcement. If anybody's here for the presentation uh, tonight, honoring Michelle Previty um, for dedication to, and service to the Municipal Alliance Committee, she was unable to make it this evening. Um, and again, um, our regularly scheduled meeting last week was canceled uh, for what was supposed to be a, a pretty <coughs> big storm that really didn't materialize. But anyway, um, this was not a convenient day. So we'll bring her back at another time uh, to honor her. So at this point, um, let's move on with the resolutions, if you would, Barbara, please. Okay. Item number two, appointments to the Upper Township Green Team Advisory Committee. Move the resolution. Second. Let's call the roll, please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number three, approving the application of the Marmora Volunteer Fire Company for highway queen drops. Move the res resolution. Second. Just so we, we don't put Mr. Pearson in a, in a bad situation. He's a member of the Marmar. Is that okay for him abstain. to vote on? No, he should abstain. Okay. okay. Can he make so I'll make a motion? No, abstain. Thank Sorry. You. That, we, nah, good point. Good okay. point. Just forgot about that. Okay. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Abstain. abstain. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Three in favor? I got your back. Yeah. <laughs> okay, item number four, authorizing a professional services contract with Cape May County Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse for an employee assistance program for township employees. Move the resolution. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number five, authorizing the mayor and township clerk to sign and submit a safety contract for participation in the Atlanta County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund 2015 Safety Incentive Program. Move the resolution. Second. 
No, this isn't the one that you were <coughs> no. recommending. This is a different, okay. Correct. Thank you. It gets a little confusing. <laughs> Please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number six, authorizing the contract with Carol Mitchell for clerical services in the office of the municipal court on an as needed basis. Move the resolution. Second. Uh, call the roll, please. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number seven, authorizing a contract with Margaret Feeney for clerical service in the office of the municipal court on an as needed basis. Move the resolution. Second. Please call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motions carried. Item number eight, appointing Theodore Cooper as a temporary construction code and building subcode official on an as needed basis in the absence of the permanent construction code and building subcode official. Move the resolution. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number nine, appointing Judge Vincent Morrison, Judge Dorothy in Incarvito Garibrand, and Judge Louis Velasco Jr. to serve as temporary municipal judges on an as needed basis. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 10, appointing Michael J. Donahue to serve as an additional municipal prosecutor on an as-needed basis. Move the resolution. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Pointing uh, item number 11, appointing <coughs> Douglas K. Walker to serve as an additional municipal public defender on an as-needed basis. Move the resolution. Second. <coughs> Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 12, authorizing the purchase of a dewatering pump for the 2013, from the 2013 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance in the amount of 7,711.50. Can we some background on this one yeah. before we? What's it for? This, dewatering pump? Uh, that's the um, stormwater pump that we uh, have over in Strathmere, um, Bayview Drive on the north end of, uh, at the end of Seaview Avenue, but it's on the you know, North Bayview Drive area, and it, you know, it's been getting filled up with sand. And it well, the pump's well. starting to, you know, because of the environment that it's in, it's just getting old and electrically not always turning on when it needs to turn on, kind of thing. Okay. So it's, it's just replacing that, that existing. It, is that something that we could? Is, I don't know if it's still in process, but is that something we could turn in? Is damage. I mean, it certainly has some damage from the storm. No. 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 And what about as part of this Bayview Avenue grant? Could that be rolled into that? No, it's on the other, it's, other it's, end. It's yeah, the other end of Bayview. It's actually it's by the within the limits of the paper. I move the resolution. Second. Let's call the roll. Is there, first of all, any other discussion? Sorry. Okay. Let's okay. call the roll, please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 13 is the renewal of the mining licenses. Move the resolution. Second. <coughs> Paul, everything's in place? Every, everything is in place. Um, we had some procedural things that we had to clear up. Uh, and I think everybody's gotten in the final documentation. There, uh, there were some issues on some of the bonds, but the, uh, my understanding is they've delivered the corrections uh, to Barb Spiegel today. So. So we're comfortable that all yes. the necessary uh, yes. paperwork fact, and documentation the, 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 the questions were uh, the same status for 25 years, but uh, upon a review, I don't usually review that part of it. When I reviewed it, I said, you need to get this fixed. And they, they went out and they got it fixed. Okay. Um, and I have done inspections, you know, over the last month on all the facilities. Uh, you know, normal maintenance things that people have, you know, that they do on an ongoing basis just need to do some reminders. Um, just as, a, as an aside, not part of this ledger bill, the, there are two mining operations, Action, Supply, and Atlantic uh, Masonry. Uh, they are currently pending at the <coughs> planning board for an application to uh, mine a little bit deeper, similar to what the uh, um, I'm trying to do which 
one of the other mining operations in Petersburg. I think that was the Caldwell Pit uh, application. Got approval from the Pine Lands Commission and the Plant Board about a year, year and a half ago to go deeper. Uh, so they've kind of followed suit and they have their experts coming in. So we, uh, that's pending. Not, not so that places. has nothing to do with the renewal. Well, I'm just giving you a kind of a two, status. Yeah, maybe a little a bit of a history for the, for the, the hobby obviously knows this because he was his own officer. And the mayor knows it, but for the newer uh, uh, committee members, we have a dual uh, uh, provision ordinance. One set of provisions for mines requires site plans and notices and, and land use applications, and then that also ties into the licensing. And because mines change, I mean, if you if you give an approval for a supermarket, it's always a supermarket until they come in and wanted to build an addition. But when you give an approval for a mine. The, the nature of the mind is that it takes stuff and the land changes. So we have an ongoing licensing that we check to make sure the things under their site plan are being complied with and then they have a requirement every five years to come in for an updated site plan right. and then they can come in in between that for additional approvals and that's what is happening now with this these other two mines, is that what you said? Two mines. And, and, and also during that third mid-year they also submit an updated topographical survey so we can do so I can do a compliance check to make sure that they are and since five years is a long time to go between the site plan approvals to make sure that they're not digging too deep or going in within a buffer that we also do a survey to just check to make sure that they're still in compliance with all the uh, buffer depth requirements. Okay. Do we have, are you comfortable enough when you look at these plans when there is something to go deeper? about the erosion and the surrounding properties that they do or what could happen? <coughs> yes, yes. And, and the town, the, the Township Planning Board hires a, uh, a hydrogeological consultant to uh, come in and also review them from a, a hydrogeological standpoint. Well, what will happen is the Planning Board will review that in detail and then make a recommendation to the Township Committee with respect to the amendment of the license and the approval of the site plan. Okay. So it's going to come before the full committee anyway? Mm -hmm. At some point, if if, if, if the planning board, plan board approves, okay, the same I just wanted to give you you know an update of where all the mines <laughs> do it, and, and it would come in as an amendment to the license to correct to do the other activities <laughs> that the planning board approved in the site plan, and then gave recommendations. <laughs> Million dollar legal question: Since we sit here and we're on the planning board, is there any the conflicts law for us? Acknowledges the fact that that is a dual role, and you're allowed to do both. Okay. That's why they say people from here go over there so that- the uh, I figured I'd ask now. <laughs> okay, so um, we have a first and a second. Um, if, if there's no further discussion, uh, would you call the roll? Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 14, under new business, Upper Township Planning Board recommendation of amendments to township ordinances Chapters 17, 19, and 20, and rezoning of Wyndham Way. Move the resolution. Oh, excuse well, me. It's not a resolution. No, it, it, um, Paul, do you want to give us a heads up on this? Yeah, the uh, the planning board, you know, as part of its planning process, uh, did a review of uh, some of its ordinance provisions, and you know, some of, some of these, you know, it was kind of kicked off in a couple different directions. You know, the, the zoning board submits an annual report to the planning board kind of uh, applications they've had and recommendations based on, hey, things they see that get a lot of uh, attention from variance relief and different things. And um, so as part of that, you know, they kind of, we did a holistic review of some of the ordinance requirements because, you know, it has been several years since we adopted, you know, the, the plan endorsement and, you know, the, the new zoning ordinance back in uh, 2008 and 2012. So it was kind of, you know, as, as you adopt a new ordinance, you, know, you, you find some provisions the way you wrote it, you know, aren't quite working the way you thought they were going to work, or you know, some you needed to add some definitions because you just need to clarify things. So that's what a lot of this ordinance is. Um, you know, we've added uh, some numerous definitions and clarifications on tree preservation, landscape buffering, uh, as through discussions with the Upper Township Business Association. We've added some more clarification and allowance for outside display uh, in commercial areas. We also had some uh, discussion and, and clarification on signage. Uh, one of the big things 
and, and we're adding essentially two new things. First is some standards on clothing bins. Uh, you know, it seemed like over the last three years, a lot of clothing bins were popping up. We were licensing them to the clerk's office, generally just so that we had a location of where they were, and that was allowed by statute. But we didn't have anything in the ordinance to regulate their location and, and how they fit in with the site plan. So we, you know, the, the plan board is making recommendations uh, for clothing bins. Uh, the big thing that really kind of came about was a discussion with um, you know, the residents over in Strathmere and you know, through their hazard mitigation was uh, a standard for bulkheads. Uh, you know, as we you know, have consistent flooding and you know, sea level rise, you know, where does that bulkhead, and, and you know, we don't require a bulkhead. You know, so there's properties, you know, Bayview Avenue consistently gets flooded, but it's flooding because there's certain properties either they don't have a maintained bulkhead, their bulkheads are too low as they build them, you know, we'd rather than build them up to a, a proper height, a more uniform, consistent height. And then also there's properties that don't have bulkheads that, you know, that if they do work on their home, they, they need to install a bulkhead as part of that process. So we, we've developed both, you know, kind of as Dan described, you know, we, you know, the mining licenses have the dual function of licensing the mine and, and having that site plan approval. You know, we kind of did the same thing with bulkheads, you know, to have a permitting requirement, you know, that talks about when you need it to have a bulkhead, you know, and where it should be, but then also looked at the design standards uh, separately. Uh, so that, that's part of here. Uh, and then we had some, you know, from the zoning board, we almost had two or three requests, and Ms. Pearson, you probably remember them, on Wyndham Way, where people were wanting, you know, it's a residential, uh, subdivision street in a commercial zone so you know, we had several requests for solar panels pools and different things or additions on these homes in there and they always had to go to the zoning board because they were non-conforming use in in a commercial zone as a residential use so anything they want to do on that property uh, you know required a variance so you know we kind of looked at the the neighborhood and, and making a recommendation to attach a committee to rezone those properties. Um, because this is not a master plan re-examination, uh, you know, individual notice had to be provided. It's to, going to have to be provided for the ordinance as well, I as believe. Well. So, we, I mean, we did hold a public hearing, you know, at the planning board after, you know, we noticed everybody within 200 feet of that zone. Uh, you know, we had pretty positive uh, recommendations <coughs> from the public regarding those properties. There was one property on the fringe that, you know, has had some improper clearing and as part of the uh, current site plan approval you know they you know you know it had gotten a use variance to go to be residential but the person wants to keep it in the commercial zone and i think the, the people were trying to say hey zone it residential um, because uh, they'd rather keep it residential than what the commercial zone allows for but that's pending an, an application you know for the planning board uh, this month um, so that, that would be part of the, that was part of the recommendation was to rezone that. Uh, so that kind of just gives you a real brief summary. If, if you had any specific questions, we'd be happy to you know, discuss any of the specific comments, but you know, it's, it's really, you know, the planning board makes a recommendation to the township committee for ordinance and zone change requests, but it's ultimately up to the township committee to, uh, to adopt the, uh, which ones you do or don't want. You know, during this process, it, you know, it has been a long process, I think it's probably been at least six or seven months uh, that, that the planning board worked on this uh, pretty extensively. I had had some discussions along the way to make sure that right. Dan you know, was seeing it from a consistency from from the you know the township end of the yeah. Uh, my office we reviewed probably three or four different versions and made recommendations, and the planning board I think has essentially corrected some of the questions that we had before. Um, uh, the, the the substance wise. The bulkheads and some of those uh, sign issues um, are, are significant changes. Obviously, the zone change is significant, but it's really just recognizing the residential subdivision that's there now. Um, the, there isn't anything major unless um, uh, uh, you had questions on the actual details of the changes. Um, uh, Hobie and I had a discussion at one point about the flag lots when he was on the planning board. Um, that's being taken out. It's not in use. It's a. It's a just a bulk consideration. Paul, well, when I look at this map, 
Yes. That shows Wyndham Way and it shows the zone around it, CM2 to R2. Yes. Then I look at the, the greater outside area with the red line around it. Okay. Is that whole portion being changed no, the, to R2 or are we just talking about the cross hatch in red? Just the cross hatch in red. Okay, no, so it's, it's, it's actually Wyndham Way and then on the other side of the railroad tracks. There's, there's, there's a little piece. There's a single lot 29 and a part of lot 31. And both of those lots, one's vacant, the green lot is vacant, mm -hmm. lot 31 is, is vacant, and lot 29 currently has a residential property on it now. So so everything everything with the CM2 zone is outlined in the in the red line. Mm -hmm. the, the the color the colors of the lot show how the lots are developed currently. Right. The, the red, the, the red or pinkish lots are commercial right. lots. The yellow lots are residential lots, and then the green lots are vacant lots. The, and you're correct. The cross hatched lots or areas are the areas that would be removed from the commercial zone and put into the adjacent because all surrounding this zone is residential zone. Okay. So we're not looking at a change to the whole red lined area. We're looking at a change to the cross hatching within the red line area. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? The uh, primary issue before the Township Committee is do you want me to um, <coughs> format this for an ordinance for introduction to be placed on a future agenda? Do you need a motion to that effect? I would like to. So that I'll make a motion to date. not approving it, it's just telling yeah. me to put it on the agenda in a, in a ordinance form. I'll make a motion to Dan proceed with uh, putting this one as an ordinance form. Second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coffin? Yes. Mr. Pearson? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Pullman? Yes. Motion is carried. And, and the public notice would include not just the normal newspaper notice, but it would also be individual notice. Uh, I'd like to see what the planning board did, and then I'm going to check it with the statute to see if we have to do it second, a second time. Okay. Uh, we, I might suspect we might, and I'll explain that to the clerk's office how we're going to do that. Okay. Item number 15, John Quigley Jr. requests to vacate a portion of the street known as First Avenue in Beasley's Point. And I might add that uh, there's only one adjacent property owner, and we have had no objections from that property owner. So both property owners will get half and half on this? Yes. Correct. And, okay. and the only question we usually have is, and Paul would report on this, is there any anticipated need for future access use, sir? No, there's not. Um, you know, as, as you see, it kind of dead ends to, to properties that actually already have frontage on Homestead Court. So, you know, there, you know, those lots are already developed. There's no need, you know, normally you would look at, if there was a large parcel on the other side that you may want to extend that road to allow for that future development. There is no development. Um, lot seven does have a driveway. You know, First Avenue, this is a little unique um, than most of our other street. But First Avenue there. goes down a little bit past her house. Correct, I mean, right that's okay. this, this is un unusual where most of the streets that we look at vacating are, are wooded, not improved. This actually has a paved, paved driveway. Paved driveway, that, paved yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't there. pave it, it was the homeowner that did it, right? No, this was... We paved it. Well, it was paved. I don't know if the, if the developer paved it back in the day. Um, I, th I think we have, the township has resurfaced it probably within the last 12 years. Okay. 12 so, years but ago. I guess my question is, is, and that's what I was leading to, it is paved at this point. It is paved at this point. And, and if, we're we're, if, if we're putting that in uh, and, and, and abolishing that, and they're going to share half ownership of paved lot. Do they have the responsibility of maintaining the lot, the, the paved area? No, and, and I'd asked them to, I'd had discussions with the, the uh, Mr. Quigley, and-, and I mean, he, I, I walk past this every day with my dog, right. so. And his, his discussions with me was that he was going to um, essentially put curbing, extend the curb, there was a curb on both sides on Seaview Avenue, he was going to, install curbing along there, put a driveway depression for the, the property owners of Block 6 and 7 and Block 664, and so that it, it would appear and look like 
the road on the driveway. That yeah. it was just a driveway, you know, he'd carry the sidewalk through there and he would make those improvements um, as part of his application. Okay. I was surprised to see it. So I'd he's put a, a sidewalk down Seaview, is that what you're saying? Correct. In and the vacated portion? Yes. And, and the curb. I know he was going to, I know he's going to do the curbing. Um, I forget about the sidewalk, but, but I know he was going to, because, because what he wants is he's going to. Hold on. Are you, are you one of the, one of the applicants? Yeah, that's my son's property. He's, he's working at the fire you need. And huh? If he could come to the microphone. Okay. If you come up and state your name and your address and if you want to, um, yeah. add to this, I mean, I, I'm very familiar with the area because I live on Hollywood first. Yeah, I'm John so. Quigley, uh, senior. I live in Maysland, but my son wanted me to come tonight. To, uh, he is he in the blue the Blue Rancher, right? The blue Rancher, right. yeah. Okay. We're, he's vacating the street. We're, what he's going to do is take half that street. We're going to mill out his side. We're going to mill out down the dirt. And he's going to put grass there, continue to curb and do a depressed curb line, so the next door neighbor has it. She's going to use the remainder of the asphalt for a driveway. That's that's what the plan is for. Okay. So I'm going to ask that becomes a driveway, and it wouldn't be maintained by us at that point. Correct. Because I think right now we actually plow down to the end where the woods are. I think we do. And yeah. I think, you know. I, I don't think we do. I know. No, no, I mean, I'm not sure where the, I don't know where the, if the neighbor uh, puts her trash can, I don't know if they put it out at the, you know, at I that street they, ender. I don't know if they put it, pull it out to see you or not. I don't know. But at this point, if this happens, they obviously would have to put their uh, yeah, well, it, trash up. Because Mr. Quigley, he. He has a driveway anyway, so he puts it out on on Seaview. Seaview, right, right, correct. Right. And and you do have a letter from that neighbor. Okay, I, I was just more concerned how you were going to you know subdivide an existing street. Technically, well, they take out the improvements once once it's their lot, it's their street. They can do whatever they want yeah. with the asphalt. Right. Okay, within our zoning and planning ordinances. I, I have a question: Have the uh, owners of Lot sixty one and sixty one hundred one been asked about the street vacation? I don't know what the, the, no. the clerk no, I, I would suggest that, that they be notified because the, I, I don't know what their intent is, but obviously a cul-de-sac off of both of those would be street furnish for them and we're taking that possibility away. So just make sure you know that. Okay. So if they haven't been notified, they should be notified. That's usually yeah, what we do. I'm not sure. I don't know if the clerk's office notified them or not. I don't no. think so. Notification is not sent. Okay. Just before we spend the money to do an ordinance. Okay. okay. So, I guess, you know, we can, we, we, can, we can do what we need to do. I guess we should table at this point, re-agendize it, just okay. notify the, the other. Well, what I would suggest is if you're okay going forward as long as the neighbors... I mean, I'm okay with what the explanation was. We notify the neighbors, and if there's no objection from either of those 61 or 6101, that we bring it back for introduction. Okay. That, that's what I would suggest. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you give me a motion and a second on that just so we have it in the record. I'll, I'll move it. <coughs> I'll second it. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? I uh, address that oh, no, I'll, I was going to give you right before public okay, comment, yeah, yeah, yeah. so go ahead. I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Would you call the roll, please? <laughs> Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. We have only one report from municipal departments, which is pretty amazing considering we haven't had a meeting for three weeks, but we have one from the construction code. Uh, it's available uh, upon request at the Township Clerk's Office tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'd like to make a motion to accept the construction code report. So, so moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay, so before I open up to the public, I know Mr. Young has one more thing to address the Township yep. Committee with. One thing that I forgot to write down. I had a couple phone calls in the past week in regards to the gravel pit in Marmore, uh, the one behind the train tracks, and Stagecoach Road. The Township, um, I mean the Township owned? Yeah, the Township owns part of it, and I think Mr. McCree owns part of it. Yes. Uh, it seems to be now the local hangout for the four-wheel club. 
and a lot of trucks and cars are going back there and racing up and down the hills and as well as a play area for the kids. So the neighbors are pretty upset that there's pickup trucks up there running up and down the hills and all over there spinning circles and when they know if there's anything the township could do about closing that pit off to keep them out. So. It'd be a, a lot of fence. It's going to be a lot of liability if we don't do something. I mean, I, Doug, you're here, so, you know, I, I hate to put the burden on, is it something that you guys could, you know, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm just really concerned with the liability since the, the, the complaints have been made by the parents and if we don't look into it and if a kid gets run over out there, I don't want to see the township liable. I mean, if, if, if they're only accessing it off of, because I think they have to go through they're, they're jumping the, They're jumping the train tracks and everything. So. And okay. I, I mean, I, you have to really investigate before you evaluate what you can do. you got to really evaluate yeah. where they're coming in at. And what access points are utilizing? I you know, said that I would relay the message here and make sure that we take a look at it. Can you do us a favor and go over and take a look at it just to see if there is some, you know, reasonable fix at this point? I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know that you can be able to address trucks going over the railroad track, but at least our access, if we close that off and put a sign on there, no trespassing or something, that might at least help to to uh, curtail some of this. I'll take a look. Even if it's one of those swing gates that we have, like at Williams or something like that, just unlocked so that well, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Okay. That was it. Thank you. Okay, so um, at this time, uh, we'll open it up if anyone from the public would like to address the Township Committee. Now's the time to do it. I guess everyone's worn out. <laughs> it's been a long evening. Uh, well, thank you for coming uh, this evening. We appreciate any time people come to uh, uh, take part in our meeting. Uh, at this time, I'll uh, turn it over to Mr. Coggins to entertain a motion to go into executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Contract negotiation for the Upper Township Rescue Squad, shared services agreement with Cape May County for the use of equipment, safety and security, and personnel. Hey I guys, we still got a meeting going on. We're reading the rest. We're I also include my motion, the estimated time and the circumstances under which discussion conducted in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the, individ or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. Second. Would you call the roll? Mr. Poggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried.